Welcome to a new episode of GameCube Gallery. In GameCube Gallery, we are taking a look at the GameCube library one game at a time. In the previous episode of GameCube Gallery, we took a look at Superman Shadow of Apocalypse. And in today's episode, we're going to take a look at a really fun game. And that game is Super Monkey Ball. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Super Monkey Ball was released on the GameCube in North America on November 18th, 2001, and it's a game where you roll around as a monkey in a ball on a variety of different courses while collecting bananas. You can't make this stuff up. Super Monkey Ball is actually a port of the arcade version with some extras and was published by Sega and developed by Amusement Vision as a GameCube exclusive. Amusement Vision is a development company owned by Sega and some of the other notable games they developed were F-Zero GX, Daytona USA 2001, Super Monkey Ball 2, and Shining Force Resurrection of the Dark Dragon. Games where you roll a ball around an obstacle course are nothing new as they date back all the way to the 80s and beyond with games like Marble Madness and Labyrinth. But Super Monkey Ball is very unique because it adds a layer of silliness to the mix and also adds unique and fun multiplayer party games for some more madness. Now there's no story to be found in Super Monkey Ball which to be honest for this type of game that's perfectly fine because it's more of an arcade style game with multiplayer party games so we don't need a story to go along with it. Besides. How in the hell do you explain monkeys and balls rolling around collecting bananas in obstacle courses? There are three main modes in Super Monkey Ball being main mode, party games, and mini games, and we're going to talk about each of these modes. The main mode is where the core of the game exists in which you navigate the obstacle courses. The gameplay is so insanely simple that anybody could pick up and play as you simply use the control stick to tilt the course, thus making the ball roll around in the direction you want, and that's pretty much it. The goal of each course is to simply make it to the goal within the time limit, and some courses even feature hidden goals that will warp you to later levels. Throughout each course you will find bananas to collect which will give you an extra life when you collect 100 of them, and until you get good at the levels, you're going to need these extra lives as you start the game with only 3 lives and a handful of continues. There are three different difficulties being beginner, advanced, and expert, and it's possible to unlock a master difficulty with levels that will make you question the universe. Beginner mode is easy enough with only 10 levels that are relatively easy. Then advanced mode features 30 levels, some of which are remixes of beginner mode levels, and the advanced mode is significantly more difficult. And lastly, you have expert mode with 50 levels and it contains remixes of advanced courses, and expert mode is insanely difficult. I've only been able to make it to level 13. That mode makes me feel like I've been punched in the nuts repeatedly when I play it. But the cool thing is that once you play a level on any mode, it unlocks in practice mode where you can play that level as much as you want until you master it, which is absolutely necessary to beat some of the more difficult levels you have to practice. In each mode, if you don't lose any lives, you can unlock extra levels at the end that are incredibly difficult. But good luck with that. I was able to do it on beginner mode, advanced mode, I definitely lose some lives. Expert mode, I can't even beat it. But level design is where it's at in Super Monkey Ball and it alternates between being really good and being incredibly frustrating. There are a variety of obstacles to contend with in the level such as bumpers that bounce you around, moving platforms, ramps, walls, pistons, narrow paths, and of course most levels do not have walls or guardrails so you could easily fall off. It is one of those games that is simple to learn but incredibly hard to master but I will say this. When you do finally beat a level that you've struggled with and lost on multiple times, damn that feels good and you get that feeling of accomplishment and it is rewarding as hell. 
The one complaint that I do have is that I really wish you could control the camera with the C stick because you have no control over the camera at all. It moves with you while you play and that can sometimes lead to cheap deaths because you can't see where you're going. Now as you play through the main mode in single player you get play points that you can use to unlock the three mini games for 2500 points each so it gives you further incentive to play the single player mode. When you beat any difficulty you're treated with a pretty fun playable credit sequence where you are constantly constantly rolling downhill trying to collect bananas and dodge letters from the credits as each one makes you lose 10 bananas if you hit it. This was fun the first time then got annoying after that but thankfully you can skip it. The main mode difficulties can be played with up to four players as well with each player taking turns with shared lives or you can play competition mode with up to four players where you play a few courses at the same time and try to race to see who finishes first. Competition mode is pretty fun to play especially if you want to see friends and family get mad. All in all, I really enjoyed the main mode, even though some of the later, more difficult levels pissed me off beyond comprehension, and I actually rage quit multiple times. But the simplistic gameplay is nice for a change, and it still provides a fun, challenging experience. In party games mode, there are three party games for up to four players, being Monkey Race, Monkey Fight, and Monkey Target. Monkey Race is basically Super Monkey Ball Mario Kart. You can do a one course race, a Grand Prix, or a time attack, and there are six different tracks of varying difficulty. In this party game, you simply roll laps around the track in an attempt to get first place, and you pick up various power-ups you can use against the other racers. It sort of has a simplistic discount Mario Kart feel to it, and it's actually pretty fun. In Monkey Fight, each Monkey Ball is equipped with a spring-loaded boxing glove, and your goal is to knock as many players off the edge of the ring as possible while avoiding being knocked off. There are a few power-ups, such as the one that makes your spring longer, and one that makes the glove larger. It is a fun, fast, and frantic party game that is enjoyable and allows you to take some much-needed aggression out on your friends and family so you don't physically abuse them in real life, you know what I mean? In Monkey Target, you and up to three other players will be taking turns rolling your monkey ball down a ramp, then launching it into the sky as your ball opens in half like wings, and your goal is to soar to one of the landing pads and land safely on a spot with the highest points possible. If you play poorly, you'll just crash into the ocean. After a certain number of rounds, the player with the most points is the winner. You have to deal with factors such as wind speed and direction, altitude and the optional wheel of danger which spins for each person and it may add hazards such as clouds that obscure your vision, bombs on the landing pad, and spiky balls in the sky. You can also get items that do things like remove the wind for a round, double your points, etc. Each round includes different types of landing pads that are in different spots. This party game is okay but it's probably my least favorite out of all three honestly and I can't see myself playing it more than a few times. But all in all these three party games are pretty damn fun and add more variety to the game outside of the main mode. And then we have the mini game mode of which there are three games to unlock with your play points being Monkey Billiards, Monkey Bowling, and Monkey Golf. Now these games are a bit more involved than the party games. Monkey Billiards can be played with one to two players and it's essentially nine ball pull. It's fairly robust with an overhead view, angled view, and you can even put spin on the ball which is nice. And yes, the balls are monkey balls. That never sounds right. It's pretty fun and works relatively well, but the only complaint I have is that it's only 9-ball, which I don't really like. It would have been nice for there to be an option to play 8-ball, but there's not but it's still fun. And there's also a tournament mode where you can play against four different computer controlled challengers. Then we have monkey bowling where again, instead of a bowling ball, you guessed it, monkey balls. You can play with up to four players in 10 pin bowling and there is also a challenge mode with different 10 pin arrangements and only 12 throws allowed. The only thing I don't like is that when you set your angled direction and throw strength, you don't get to select it exactly how you want it. Instead, you have to deal with meters that move back and forth and you have to time it right to get it where you want it and I don't really care for that. But one good thing is that after you set your strength and throw the ball, you do have a short window to put some left or right spin on the ball at varying spin levels. Monkey golf is exactly what it sounds like. It's mini golf where the monkey balls are the golf balls and it plays exactly like you would expect from mini golf. You can play 18 different holes with up to four players and each hole is different and of course they get more complex as you go along. You set your direction, your range, and your power to hit your ball to get it into the hole with the least amount of strokes possible. That's what she said. <laughs> Nothing about that sentence sounded right. I'm sorry. 
Monkey Golf is pretty fun. I actually think it's my favorite of the three mini games, and I could see myself playing it quite a bit. So the mini games all together in Super Monkey Ball are pretty fun and fleshed out. Just be prepared to play single player for a while to get enough play points to unlock them all. So what we have here with Super Monkey Ball gameplay wise is a really simple yet challenging and incredibly fun game with a ton of variety for one to four players across the three different game modes and I like it quite a bit. This type of game is hard to gauge how long it would take you to beat it because it will vary by player skill. And then of course, do you consider beating it meaning completing every difficulty? Not everyone will be able to do that. But it looks like on average, it takes people around four to five hours to complete the main game and completionists can expect to play for around 36 hours, but again, this time will vary greatly depending on your skill level and patience. If you want to see some very impressive stuff, I recommend watching some no warping speed runs of Super Monkey Ball. I will leave a link to one in the sources down below. To say the least, it is incredibly impressive. The fastest speed run playing through all difficulties from beginning to end is 20 minutes, which with over 300 levels total, that's less than 12 seconds per level, which is insane. Now let's quickly touch on the visuals, music, and the sound design. The visuals are actually really good with plenty of color and details, especially in the background environments, which are easy to overlook because you're concentrating so much on staying on the course. The background environments are nice to look at with plenty of variety from mountains to large structures and clouds, and the animations are really good as well. Also worth noting is that Super Monkey Ball runs buttery smooth with pretty much no lag that I noticed, and that is a must for a game like this. So yeah, the visuals are pretty impressive to me for a game like this because they could have easily went cheap in that department because you don't really need impressive visuals for this type of game, but I'm glad they went that extra mile. The sound design is pretty good with plenty of nice sound effects such as the ball rolling, running into walls and objects, collecting bananas, and your monkey of course makes plenty of sound while you play as well, and it all comes together in a way that further enhances the gameplay. The music is pretty good as well with several different tracks that often fit the frantic nature of the game and the music changes every so often when you're playing through a longer mode like advanced or expert but i will say this there's at least one song that sounds like it's straight up from a porno to sum up super monkey ball on the gamecube is a fantastic game that is simple to pick up and play yet hard to master it has a ton of content you can play both single player and multiplayer and it's just really fun to play all around and extremely satisfying when you beat difficult levels. So if you like games like this, I can't recommend Super Monkey Ball enough. Get it, play it, I think you're gonna enjoy it. And I'm not the only one that thinks this because it reviewed quite well on Metacritic with an average critic score of 87 out of 100 with 28 critic reviews and an average user score of 8.1 out of 10 with 69 user ratings. Super Monkey Ball was a decent success sales-wise, as in North America it sold around 950,000 copies, and it sold around 1,460,000 copies total worldwide, which was enough to impress Sega and led to sequels such as Super Monkey Ball 2 and Super Monkey Ball Adventures. Thankfully, it's a pretty common game and relatively inexpensive compared to other GameCube games. At the time of this recording on PriceCharting.com, I'm seeing an average loose price at around $18, an average complete price at around $26, and an average new price at around $76. Now it does seem like the price might be going up as at the time of this recording, I'm seeing current complete eBay listings at around $45, and I'm seeing recent complete sold listings at around $35 to $48. So I think Super Monkey Ball is starting to transition from being a common game to an uncommon game because it is a game that's in pretty high demand for GameCube collectors because it's a good game and it's a GameCube exclusive. Well, there you have it, folks. GameCube Gallery on Super Monkey Ball. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and hit that like button. Let me know in the comments down below if you own and or have played Super Monkey Ball and what you think about the game as well. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you have any games to recommend for a future episode of GameCube Gallery. I will go ahead and tell you that the next episode of GameCube Gallery, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into Super Monkey Ball 2 because I had so much fun with Super Monkey Ball. Folks, if you're new here, consider subscribing so that you can join the Retro Wolf family. And as always, stay safe out there, keep playing games and having a good time, and I'll see you all in the next video. Later.